Can replacing your tiny, thin, lightweight trim claw to something machined out of solid brass actually improve your tone? Well, today, let's find out. Yes, welcome back to the channel, you guys. I hope you're having a great day today. Well, you know, on this channel, we have done a ton of different trim comparisons from all different manufacturers, all different types. We've even done, you know, steel versus brass saddles, uh, titanium versus stock trim blocks, and I've always been able to hear a difference, even if it was pretty subtle. But I've never gone downstream of the trim block. So it should be pretty interesting today. So what we've got is a solid brass machined trim claw that locks in the hoop end of the springs. So we're going to take a closer look at this and see if it will change the tone and more importantly to me if it will increase the sustain. Now according to Axe Labs, the tone claw is easy to install, increases sustain, helps stabilize tuning, machined from solid brass, optimizes vibrational transfer. Now, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to hear a difference in tone, but it would be interesting to see if it adds sustain. So we're gonna do a few different tests. One, you know, comparing the tone and the other comparing the sustain. So should be pretty interesting. Let's jump in. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is test the difference in weight. Now, here's just a stock trim claw, something that you'd find on cheap guitars, expensive guitars. They're all pretty much the same. And this one's coming in at 12 grams. Let's try with the tone claw. Now, just by picking them up, I can tell the tone claw is much heavier, but let's find out the actual weight difference. And it looks like it's coming in at 58 grams. So from 12 grams to 58 grams, uh, substantial weight difference for sure. Um, yeah, let's install it in the guitar and see if it increases the sustain. All right, you guys, so I've gone ahead and recorded all the stock clips. Now what we're gonna do is remove the stock claw. So what I've done is put some painter's tape here and marked where it sat. So the tension on the springs will be the same. And the next step is just clipping off the stock ground wire like so. And we will be attaching that. It's really easy. They uh, give you a nice little tab. Uh, then what we're gonna do is just kind of back off these uh, screws and remove the springs. Now, one of the most interesting aspects of the tone claw is the ability of this top plate to kind of slide forward and lock your springs in place. So all you have to do is tighten those top two screws and this plate automatically moves forward and locks the hoop end of the spring. So you just put your spring in like so, and then tighten up those two screws and the whole thing slides forward and locks them all in. And as you can see, you can put up to five different springs, but we're just gonna keep it stock with three. So there we go. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the top plate and install the tone claw. Now, as you guys can see, I've got the trim claw in place. Now, each one of the posts has a nice little machined groove. So we're gonna put that in first and it really does hold it in place. And then we'll just pull and install the spring and that's what we're going to do for all three springs nice little notch make sure you're in there and then you can just slide that in and last one there we go you can see i've got a block behind the trim block here just so it doesn't tip too far back uh, that's always nice then what you can do is install the top plate so we'll just put that in place there we go and you know as i mentioned nice little design as you tighten these up these screws, it will slide that whole top collar forward and lock in all the springs. So pretty clever design. So let's do that. And yeah, hopefully you guys will see as this tightens. There you go, it's starting to shift forward already. Let's do the other side here. There we go. And everything is locked tight and in place so it's impossible i don't know if we'll be able to see that but yeah you can't even pull <laughs> any of these out no matter what you do it's locked for good so now that you have that uh it's all installed then what we're going to do is take these two screws bring the the trim up to my lines that i previously um you know 
drew across there so we knew where the stock one was. And then we're gonna take this ground wire and they say you can either twist it around, but I think um, we're gonna solder it just because uh, I think that's the best option. So we'll solder this tab uh, into the ground wire and then we'll take these two screws, bring the tone claw back up and it's all installed. So we've got the tone claw installed and we're ready to do our tone and sustain test. And when we look on the back, yeah, that's definitely a serious bit of kit there. And if you're the type of person who likes to leave the back cavity, you know, off their strat, it gives it a custom look for sure. So there you guys go. That's what it's like installed. Let's plug it in and do our audio tests. All right, you guys, now let's look at some of the sustain. Now to do that, we're gonna actually look at the waveforms. So on the top, it's the stock claw, and on the bottom is the tone claw. And this is just basically strumming a G major chord. And as you can see, there's different kind of overtones happening on the tone claw versus the stock claw. So definitely something different happening. And I would say, you know, by the time you get to this portion of the note, um, definitely a little bit more uh, volume, a little bit more robust here on the tone claw. Uh, but by the time you get here, the note's pretty much gone. You can see it kind of like, uh, kind of pops in and out at the end of the stock one and on the end of the tone claw, it's, it's very stable. So it's kind of like rings out all the way to the end, but definitely, yes, a, f a few different, uh, things happening on the tone claw for sure. Uh, in terms of overall sustain, I would say the most noticeable part, sorry, here's still the G chord, um, is probably in this portion of the note right here, where you can see it's definitely kind of gives you more volume to the end. The overall sustain, at least on my guitar, it's gonna depend if you're floating, if you're decked, if you're blocked or whatever is happening on your Strat, it's gonna be a little bit different, but at least on mine here, it definitely kind of uh, gives you a little bit more volume all the way through. And then here, yeah, you can see it popping in and out and on the tone claw, it just kind of sustains to the end. So that was the G chord. Let's look at the A. So this was an A minor here. And I would say a little bit, uh, sort of the same as before. I would say maybe as it comes down, oh, this is very, very similar when we look at it. So the waveform's very similar on the top. And then as you come through, maybe a little bit thicker in this portion of the note. And then as you come to about here, it evens out and goes to the end. So nothing really conclusive on that one other than, yeah, you're gonna get a little bit of a different tone on that. And then on the harmonics, so I hit three harmonics. And as you can see, again, very, very similar in terms of the initial portion of the note, right? The Each portion of uh, when you first play it is very similar. And then as it sustains here on this one, definitely a, a little bit more robust for sure. Uh, let's check the beginning of the notes. Yeah, very similar again. So I would say rather than like giving you a bunch of extra sustain. This one did sustain a little bit longer for sure on the tone claw. Uh, but like I said, by the time you get to this note, this portion of the note, it's kind of just becoming atmospheric, you know? So it definitely sustained longer. It ended here versus the, the stock one. But the thing I'm noticing is more kind of like after the initial plucking of the note, um, it seems like anyway, on the tone claw, you get a little bit more sustain right after even though the initial ones you can see they're almost exact so that's uh, that's how you can tell something is actually different right the uh, the attack of the note is the same in velocity but what happens after is is kind of the interesting part and then the last one was that chord up high so i hit a d form chord it's actually a b chord so i did it on 12th fret there um, and up high notes really do, you know, suffer, I think, and sustain. And it's kind of the same story. There's just different uh, kind of peaks and overtones happening on each one. And I would say by the time you get here, maybe some slight 
Yeah, maybe some slight volume gains. So I'm noticing the same thing pretty much on every note um, or on every test. Not a huge, huge gain in overall sustain, but there is a difference kind of, you know, happening right after the attack of the note. Um, almost in every example, you notice there's a little bit uh, of, of thickening and a little bit of extra volume. So yeah, interesting stuff. That is the sustain comparison. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed the comparison between the Stock Claw and the Axe Labs Tone Claw. Really interesting product. I haven't seen anything like this before with the locking mechanism and all that stuff. So really interesting. Uh, I will link to these guys in the video description below. You can check out all the information there. Other than that, have yourself a great day.